reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Engines pumping and thumping in time. The green light flashes, the flags go up. Churning and burning, they yearn for the... We welcome you to American Racers. Welcome you to American Racers, covering grassroots racing families, teams, individuals, and fan bases who enjoy this sport week in and week out at our local racetracks. Kevin, we are one-third into the winter. We have two-thirds to go. When this part of the, the season you're thinking about what's next, what have I got on my list of things that has to be accomplished before we get started. You know, if you wait till uh, when the birds are chirping and the, the plants are blooming, you're way behind. So uh, thinking about what needs to be fixed on the cars, what uh, stuff we need to acquire to, to get ready for next year. There's a lot of prep involved. What we have here is we have a mini episode of American Racers and uh, Kevin's going to talk about some of the aspects that we're going to cover. We're going to start out with some circle track, how it evolved over the years from the vintage times, how the cars have evolved, how it, the classes have evolved, what different type of vehicles can participate and touch on a little bit of different things we see as we, we show you these clips throughout the episode different things that piqued our interest and we hope pique yours too. This is American Racers Fast Check question number one. Between the years of 1958 and 1961, which quarter mile drag strip located at Old Rail 74, Wooster Pike and Old Route 125, Beachmont Levee near the Lunkin Airport was formed under what sanction? Your four choices are Queen City Motorsport, Beachmont Drag Racers Association, Southern Ohio Timing Association, or Automotive Speed Auto Park. The answer later in this episode of American Racers. American Racers question, what do you think that answer is? Well, Brent, that's a little before my time, but if I guess I just got to throw a guess out there, and I'm going to say it's uh, B, the Beachmont Drag Racers Association. Really? I thought it was Queen City Motorsports. Well, I guess we'll find out later on. Later on in the episode, we'll, uh, we'll find out. But I'm sticking with possibly A. Or C or D. I'll cover <laughs> all my bases. He's going to cover everything. It's just like you, Kevin. You're covering it all. Here's our section on circle track, dirt, and asphalt. And amazing how some of these old cars, how stock they are. They, they look identical to what you see rolling down the highway. Same big old chrome bumpers and other than hubcaps and chrome, they look like just what you see every day. Man, did you see that 65 Mustang official pace car? 
I love that Mustang convertible pace car. That is awesome. Well, if you had that today, what would you do with it? Well, more than likely, I would drive it for a few days and then I'd wind up selling it for racing parts. <laughs> Give me some uh, operating money. Upgrade the 9B car. There you go. Yeah, you got to keep the money flowing. and uh, That thing's probably worth a pretty penny. That's worth a few bucks. Yes. I wonder where that's at today. It's probably in a museum. through here and, and seeing how the tracks evolved how the the safety though is just amazing to me that uh, the drivers are in here they have t-shirts on basic very little bit of helmet do you see that victory lap of the 4u stock car do you notice uh no, <laughs> the lack no of fire safety suit, gear back in the day no gloves he did I'm, have gloves. That was the only thing he had on. There's others that have no gloves. I don't see a whole lot of tubing in a lot Open of these. Open face, oh, helmet, yeah. no fire suit. You know, a, a lug, t-shirt, <laughs> a, a lug nut fly up, and you got an open face helmet. You got some problems. This is those guys were the barnstormers. I feel of stock car racing and circle track. They really took the injuries and set the standards for safety. What do you think? Shake it off and move on. It's all about enjoying the time. If you're a fan, you have a favorite racer. I love to watch Kevin. He's a wily fox out there, and I think he tries to take care of his equipment too much. And We'll, we'll touch on that later some other time.
Kevin's going to introduce us to the most common used flags in automotive racing. Well, the first thing everybody wants to see is, is the green flag. That's the start. Everybody's going. That gets you going. Uh, white flag, obviously, means there's one lap to go. Uh, flags nobody wants to see, a black flag. It means you've done something wrong. You're being asked to leave the racetrack. Your car's smoking excessively. Setting down oil. Uh, the blue flag with a stripe on it, usually it's an orange stripe. Not as commonly used as it used to be. They used to call it a layover flag. Uh, basically it means hold your position. You're being overtaken by the leaders. You're about to get lapped. Don't go from the top to the bottom. Hold your line. Give them the opportunity to get around you without causing a dreaded yellow flag. Another flag that nobody likes to see is the yellow flag. Cautions on the track. Mm. Uh, might be debris. Could be a wreck. Might could be a wreck or another wreck. Uh, something falls off the car. That means you got to basically got to restart again. Line back up. Uh, if you're in the lead, you've got a big lead. You've lost all your lead. lead. Restart. You're right back crunched up again. The worst flag nobody wants to see. Red flag. Yeah. Red flag's bad. Uh, there's a serious wreck. Somebody may be hurt, injured. Safety workers need to come out on the track. You need to come to a stop. Uh, then there's the flag that every racer wants to see. It's the checkered flag. Uh, hopefully you're the first one to see, see it. it. <laughs> the, the, fir the first one is the flagman goes by. You get to see the checkered flag. That's what everybody wants to see. Unfortunately for the fans, that means the race is over. But hopefully their driver did well and uh, everybody had a good, safe race. Hey Kevin, what's American Racers mean to you? American Racers to me is more about uh, not what you see on TV, it's, it's more about the people you don't ever see on TV. It's the, the families the, that go every weekend and race at the local short track, the, uh, whether it be a half mile dirt, I consider myself an American racer. I'm not in that big percentage of people that the one percenters that have the, the, the on Sunday you see on TV. I'm the people you don't ever see on TV. The next segment would be land speed, and we're going to talk about the different aspects of land speed racing. We have uh, a local track use up in Wilmington, and it's on its third year and they've set a lot of records up there. The first cars were built in the 1880s. Within a decade, men had started to race them. Some raced head-to-head -head against each other in contests that became Daytona, Indianapolis, Formula One. Others raced against the clock. For them, the goal was to set the world land speed record. The land speed record was a British institution for the first 60 years of the 20th century. Then the Impeta shifted to the United States, to a new breed of speed aficionados called drag racers, hot rodders. Of the eight Americans to emerge at the forefront of this contest, only two were left standing by the mid-1960s, Craig Breedlove and Art Arfons. In just two years, they would set the record eight times on Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats, pushing it up through 400, 500, and 600 miles per hour, and experiencing some of the most spectacular crashes in motorsport history. Here's their story and the sound. <laughs> inspecting it how they've really done the aerodynamics they've got a pan on the back side of the brake drum to smooth out the airflow you know on a land speed car you're, you're getting every bit of horsepower you can out of the engine and getting all the drag you can get out of the wind you know they got the covers on the front of the wheels on a lot of them they've got these they've covers chopped some of the tops Absolutely, less less air, less drag, more aerodynamic is what they're shooting for. The less uh, air, the turbulence, right? 
the smaller of a hole you have to punch through the air, less resistance you have. Yeah. Welcome back to American Racers Fast Check Question Number One. The answer is C. S O T A Southern Ohio Timing Association. If you knew the answer, you know your racing history of Hamilton County, Cincinnati, Ohio, home of American Racers. look into the drag racing and uh, there's quite a bit of drag racing happens in this area several different tracks locally uh, a lot of people we all know participate in that every weekend taking the families down and uh, burning up the strip and, Ke and Kevin hit on a key thing family this is really American racers is about grassroots racing family oriented teams individual teams this is not major sponsorship racing.
last section is going to hit on go-karts. And we know that most of the big guys today got their starts in go-karts. Move from a go-kart, move up to the next step. There, there's a lot of steps a driver can take. And uh, the go-kart really is, uh, you, you learn how to handle the cart with the seat of your pants. And you, you find out if, uh, if, if you've got the desire. You know, there's a lot of work involved in this, and that's where you start out quickly. Yes, you do. Literally by the seat of your pants. I think those guys are like maybe five inches off the ground. If that. <laughs> if that. Crawling junkies from across the West come out every year to this event. 
with a need to push their rigs to the breaking point on a course that has been specifically created to do just that. American Racers Disclaimer promotes safety, safety, and more safety, especially on the highways and streets of our towns. We want to keep you around for a long time as a viewer of American Racers. We're going to hit on all types of aspects on safety. We might lock on one particular thing, like the Hans device, or we might lock on to seat belts. Now you're up to how many points? Six points? I have a five point in my car. You can get six, and some of them are a six. They have a connector. So um, Hans devices are, are. We'll get into all that later. Head and neck restraints. Fire suppression. We'll get into. Um, we'll get into all that stuff later, probably. In our upcoming. Upcoming clip. episodes. Oh, American Racers. <laughs> okay, anything else we need to touch on? Mm, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, let's, 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 do, let's do a couple more little things. Okay, what do you want to do? Um, Brent, we've, we've talked about a lot of my stuff that I do. I'm racing circle track, racing. Uh, what, do you, what kind of motorsports turns your crank? I'll tell you what turns my crank. I am a big fan of motorsports. That turns my crank. I love to watch. I'm a good spectator. I get excited about the drivers. You know, everybody has their favorite. But I do have dabbled in racing. I've done a little bit of drag racing in my past, and I have done a little land speed. Uh, it's expensive, like you said. Your shop and your work down there provides you the possible income, okay? And some of these racers have a lot of money that they dump and people that oh, are yeah. helping them dump funds into their cars. It's a family affair. It's a, a unity of comrades getting together and building a car. It's you and your brother and your nephew, that's a family circle, man. That's that is American racing to me. That's what turns my crank. I love that aspect of racing, the grassroots. I remember a few years back, uh, a friend of mine who's now passed away, we, he didn't hit, know I had any interest in racing. I'd quit for a, a period of time. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I, I went and drove a Legends car at Charlotte Motor Speedway. One time, one shot, had a ball. I love those Legend cars. And come back from that and he's like well I didn't know you were interested in racing oh yeah you know there there's no cure for racing no. uh, it's in your it's in your DNA almost we decided to build a car run a floor and speedway they called it the super dirt division at the time and we spent the winter building a car from the ground up and he taught me a lot of things that I didn't know I taught things he didn't know we had a ball our families did things together. Um, it it was really uh, it made us so close knit. It does um, you it, have a it, common it's, bond? It's amazing the relationships that I have with people. Oh, uh, I've seen because it. of racing. I've seen it. Uh, my you know, and the biggest enjoyment I get out of racing, I love watching any kind of racing. If I'm watching TV and flipping channels. It doesn't go past any kind of racing. I want to see it. Yep. Um, but what I really enjoy is when I race, 
I race with my nephew. Um, we he's always parked next to me. Anything I pits, need, anything he needs, uh, his guys help me. I help when they need it. On weekends that I don't take my car racing, I'll go with them. Yeah. We went to a Lucas Oil race. I worked on their car. He competed in that one? He competed in a Lucas Oil race at uh, Lawrenceburg Speedway. I didn't take my car. I went and helped them. Um, we park near the same people every week. It is social. Um, it's a camaraderie. Absolutely. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a close-knit family atmosphere. Fraternity, sorority, what? It's a it's a family that that's we're not connected by blood, but uh, we're connected by maybe motor oil. I guess it is <laughs> motor oil. Uh, there you go. Can't get much better than that. Yeah, and to be honest with you, Kevin, I've seen you engage with customers at your place of business who's involved in racing. You've actually helped me with that one vehicle that I had. He designed an aspect that I had to get around on a modification. I fabricated it, he designed it, and it to this day works beautifully. Well, it was something I was familiar with. Right. Something you weren't familiar with, and, and to me it was a simple issue. And I was making it too complicated, but yes, it was a very simple fix and it works great. But it, it was simple thing. to me that, that I knew, uh, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, well, this will work. And because I had done this in the past, and it's amazing the things I've learned working on race cars. Um, and even in your place of business, the things you've learned well, can carry over and, and into some of that. You know, the, the, the junkyard business, you're, you're tearing things apart, you're ruining things. In a race car, that's my opportunity to, to be meticulous. Shine and make it shine. Well, my, my, you've seen my car, it don't shine a lot. Well, I'm not saying, I'm but let your skills shine. <laughs> the, the, you have to be meticulous. Yes, you do. Uh, every nut and bolt has to be done Properly. correctly. This, and it, you learn a lot from that. And, and and I'm really, and I've passed that on to other people that are coming up through the other classes. This is how you got to do it. And it's just passed down from racer to racer. Things you need it to is. do. It is. It's generational. It really is. It really truly is. And the thing, the other thing that I liked about going and visiting you at, at the track was the one night I went down there was fan appreciation night and you guys had that whole infield filled and the fans just get to pour in out of the stands That's meet and greet get up close touch you get your autograph it, it's a great night it, you know the the fans the without the fans there is no racing it, it it's that's it they're there they're supporting this they're they're it, the money that we get back at the end of the night barely keeps us going, but it comes from the fans. Yes, it does. Um, fan appreciation night, when the fans come out, uh, my daughter's there, Yes. and she's putting kids in the car. And the kid will walk up, <laughs> and they, they can't believe they can actually see these cars. They can touch them. And here my daughter goes, you want to get in it? And they're like... Their eyes get this big. <gasps> and better I believe it. Sure I always do. think about when I was a kid, yeah. have no idea how young I was, was at Dayton Speedway, which no longer exists, was a big half mile, super fast asphalt track. Mm. And they ran an ARCA show there that day. And I don't remember whether the guy won or lost, but I know one thing he did when he won a fan, the race was over. Uh, uh. And this guy goes, hey kid, get in the car. And he loads me and like two other kids in this Hemi powered, like uh, road runner. And he takes us up. We were probably doing 10 mile an hour, but we thought we were flying. Oh this gosh. guy's taking us around this track and it was, it was magic. So that basically got your crank turning. Well, my dad was always age. involved in racing. It was passed down from my father. Uh, we were always at the races locally. Uh, took the wrecker, towed cars, you know, when they were in wrecks. Uh, but we were always at a racetrack growing up, and uh, and and I was one of those people that, oh, this racing's going to be easy. Yeah, ra oh, that looks easy. You think and, so when you see it? Yeah, there's a lot of prep. 